Good evening and happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to the Ghost Biker Garage. I'm your host, the Ghost Biker, and I have a great guest that's going to be on with us tonight. Uh, if you've seen the posts and everything, I actually advertised it just a little bit earlier this week um, because I have been traveling, uh, filming for season four. Um, I know a lot of you have kind of reached out about some different things that's going on and I've not been able to respond. So that's what's been going on. We uh, uh, had a two night filming spree in Kentucky and um, filmed in for two separate episodes, two nights back to back investigations. So I know you guys kind of know how that is. We, we filmed all night, Tuesday night, all night last night and uh, drove back this morning. And uh, so, um, so anyways, we're, we're, uh, you know, we've been kind of offline for the last couple of days, but again, we've got a great show tonight that I'm very excited about and want to say hello to a couple people who are on. Hello, Steve. Hello, Peppy. Hello, Chris. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining us. And the same as usual, if you guys uh, have any comments or any questions, please feel free to put it over in the comment section and we will get to your questions as soon as, as uh, we kind of catch a break in the conversation because we do have a whole lot to talk about tonight. Um, my guest, she is the host of a popular podcast, Spoopy Talk. She's been doing this for a few years now, and she is also the uh, the founder and investigator with Madison Paranormal Investigations. And she has done all of this before even becoming a teenager. So we have some some great stories. Um, she is such an awesome and brave young lady, and she's she's very busy as well. So uh, we're very lucky to get her on the show. So I hope you all will help me welcome Miss Madison Smith. Hey, Madison. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. I know you've been busy. You've you've come straight from the softball field, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what what position do you play in softball? Um, usually I am the starter catcher and then sometimes they have me play a little bit of right and mostly first. Wow. So a lot of responsibility there. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, thank you so much. And, and, you know, thank your dad and everything. Thank you guys for, for, uh, coming on here. Um, so if you will tell us a little bit about yourself, how old you are, how you got started and what you do with uh, Madison Paranormal Investigations. Okay, so like I said, I am Madison Smith. I am 14. I've been in paranormal investigation for three-ish years, I think. And, uh, hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. And like I said, if anyone's got any any questions or anything, uh, Dr. Sumner, my friend, is on here, and she says first base is base is the most awesome position. I know she was a softball player as well. Oh, well, look at that. Yeah, yeah, softball, <laughs> paranormal. So um, so, so your dad, uh, he, is he one that got you involved in the paranormal or did you kind of get your dad involved in the paranormal? Okay, so I'm the one that kind of got my dad into it. He was just the one to take me there. <laughs> like a joke, we just call him an Uber because <laughs> he just drives me places because I can't drive yet. <laughs> Well, I know coming as someone who was very close with their dad and uh, did all kinds of different adventures with him. I just love to see you guys out traveling to these locations and sharing the, that time together. I think that's very cool that uh, he does that with you and that um, you guys have that shared interest. Yeah, it's really like something to bond over, you know, so... Absolutely. So, so what area are you out of and what are some of the different locations that you've investigated? Okay. So I am from Iowa. So like Rock Island's right there for me at least. So I like to go to Dan Binder Furniture, also known as the old YMCA. That's one of my favorite places to go. And you will literally hear me talk about it all the time on any show, any podcast. <laughs> I've seen some of your different uh, pictures and different stuff that you've posted from there. What's what's the story behind that location? Okay, so practically what it was is I, I'm a little bit rusty on the history. I haven't done like a lot of like 
yeah, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I used to like guide people around there and be like, oh, this building was born, uh, born. <laughs> <laughs> This building was built in 1914. Okay, so practically what happened is they started planning the build in 1912. And then they were like, you know what? Let's actually build it. So then they built it in 1914. And then I believe two fires happened. Um, I don't want to say anyone died specifically in the fires. I just know that mm -hmm. it was like a tragedy and like yeah. water bottle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but either way. Um, a lot of things are burned out. So when they first got the building, it was just, um, so like I said, it was a YMCA. And then they scrapped it for metal because there was a lot of metal staircases in the building. And then it turned mm -hmm. into a U-Haul. And now it's a furniture store. Mm -hmm. And when the owner, or the owner now got it, Lisa, or Lisa Viner, mm -hmm. uh, the whole um, like roof of her office was charred. And it was great, you know. Wow. They literally found yeah. a dead cat in there. It was, it was great. Oh wow! So yeah, um, but they've taken a lot of good care. Of it, so. That's awesome. That's awesome. It, I mean, from the pictures, it looks like a, a really nice restored building. Mm -hmm. Are they are they welcome and opening to the paranormal? Yeah. So, like, they will uh, print flyers and put them out in the furniture stores. And people, they aren't really, like, I don't want to say offended, but, like, they're not yeah. really, uh, like, I don't know the word, man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, that, so they're pretty open to it. Yeah, like, they don't mind. That's awesome. They don't mind. They're just like, oh, okay. So, so the, I guess, I'm guessing they probably had spirit interaction since they've been there. Yeah. That's cool. I and here, uh, tours opening and everything. It's great. That's a really cool place to really kind of cut your teeth on and, and investigate. Was that, was that your first location? To investigate? Mm hmm No, it was not. Okay. My first location was Renwick Mansion. And that's where I met a lot of people that I know today. And that's yeah. where I like, put myself out there like, hey, guys, guess who's here? <laughs> was it a uh, was it a new I mean uh, was it an event like a, a public hunt that you did or I was believe it, just... it was I believe okay. it was a public event okay um, what's some of the other locations that you've investigated mm, really got to think of this one uh, so um, it's a tough one when you've done a lot <laughs> yeah so um, I've been to uh, Vlaskak's murder house. Same with um, Malvern Manor and um, what's the asylum called? I literally can't remember what it's called. Uh, oh, I've been there. Yes. And then there's this other one. Um, like it's well known, but it's not that well known. But mm -hmm. people, they'll break into it to get in there, kind of thing. Uh, what state is it in? That I can't remember. I just know that it's right next to a cemetery. <laughs> well, asylums are, are really cool. I did my, well, I did my second one uh, earlier this year, St. Albans, and uh, I've done Waverly Hills. And so those are, are really fun to do. I like those asylums. Um, and you mentioned the Villisca Axe Murder House. That's one that's definitely on my bucket list. And Dr. Sumner on here, I know that Soul Sisters has been and she, uh, she, she loves Villisca and Malvern Manor. She actually asked a question, says, why did you want to start investigating? Okay, so the reason why I kind of wanted to do it is half of, um, that's a really hard question, honestly. I really, really got to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think half of it was more of curiosity, not of mm -hmm. does it exist, but more of, how does it work kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I started it because of that. And also because I watched a lot of the TV shows and that's really what got me into it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like I watched ghost brothers. Um, what is it called? Is this, it's uh, something asylum. I can't remember what oh, it is. Uh, ghost asylum. Yes. That. I watched that all the time. Same with um, Haunted Collector. That was one of my favorites as a kid. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. Let's see if we have any other questions over here. Um, 
everyone will just have to kind of look over me. Like I said, I'm kind of slow here, so I'm manning the chat room as well as as uh, having the conversation as well. Um, so, so are you interested in the history side of the investigation, or is it more about the paranormal for you? Honestly, it's both, but more towards the history side since I've always been into history. Like I've always appreciated it and looked at it and been like, "Well, this is really cool." You know, I love that because you know, for for myself and some of the other different investigators, especially some of them here in the chat room, I know that um, the history plays such an important role in in these mm -hmm. different locations. And um, you know, I know you've also met a whole lot of people in the paranormal community that, um, you know, that you've sort of modeled your investigation style and, and that have kind of, I guess, looked up to in a way, um, you know, what are, are, who are some of those people that, that you've met? Cause I mean, for, for a while, it seemed like every time I looked at your page, you were going to different events and, and meeting a, a ton of different people. So some of the people that I know are Dan Class, Elizabeth Saint, and a lot of other people like that. But uh, yeah, you know, not <laughs> I me mean, not being good with names. Like, hey guys, <laughs> I know, uh, I know that that Dan, um, you're doing an event with Dan later on this year, correct? Yes. Have you been to the Hinsdale House yet? Not yet, but I'm really excited to be. Yeah, I think that that is uh, that's a cool location and definitely somewhere that that I would like to visit as well. Um, so why don't you, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about some of the different events and stuff that that you've got coming up a little bit later this year. And we'll go ahead. We'll put all of this in the in the show notes and stuff so that people can if they want to come and meet you and find you. Okay, so August 21st is the Hinsdale House event in New York, and then October 15th to 17th is the Dead Con in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is a uh, parapanel and booth. And then September 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Midwest Monster Fest, which is also a parapanel. Ah, so are you going to be talking about uh, anything, anything in particular on the panel? That I'm not sure about. It's honestly like what the people want to hear, you know, like if they want to hear my story, have at it. If they want to hear about my dogs, so be it. <laughs> gotcha. looks like your dad's on here. He says, glad that I got Madison home in time to be on tonight. And we're glad that you did too. I know that we were a little concerned because I know you had your softball practice mm -hmm. uh, kind of later than expected. So mm -hmm. we're definitely glad that you were able to make it on. Um, we have another question here that says, what do other young adults think about what you do? Do you take friends your age with you or not to, uh, or excuse me, I'm having a hard time reading. Do you take friends your age with you or are they not really into it? Okay, so my friends, most of them support me in it. Like, they support me in it, but they're not like, oh, I want to go. They're more like, I support you in it, but I'm going to stay home and watch the shows instead. You know, you go do that. Are they um, more Are they more scared or, or just, uh, you know, not, not as, not as uh, interested in it as, as you, as you are? Usually they're interested. It's just their parents that don't want them doing it because gotcha. it can be dangerous. So, you know, respect the parents' opinion. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I definitely, um, I can really respect that side. And I can also respect the fact that um, you had an interest in it and that your parents, you know, let you pursue that interest. I have a lot of respect for that. Mm -hmm. So have you had any, uh, uh, scary experiences at any of these different locations that you can talk about? Okay, so going back <laughs> to the old YMCA <laughs> once again, <laughs> um, I've heard things, seen things, there's a lot of stuff that happens. One of the ones that are like in my mind, like permanently, there's two of them that are kind of just popping up. Okay. So there is a running track that is still original to the building. And there used to be a camera up there that we just like set up because we can't actually like go out there because it's really unstable. 
Because, you mm -hmm. know, the floor is rotting, stuff like that isn't really safe. But um, on camera, we caught a man with wired glasses. And in the corner, when you stand in the garage, because you can look up. Yeah. Because they took the basketball flooring out, which used to be above the actual um, underground part, which would be where the pool area is. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look up, there's like a corner of it that you can see. And me and some other people saw someone in, like leaning over the railing, just looking down at us. And oh, wow. I remember that. So did that, did that scare you or just kind of push you to uh, do more? So it pushed me to do more because then we started asking questions and we could hear verbal answers back without any recording equipment. Like we oh, started wow. hearing like a voice responding to us, just like me and you are talking right now. That's always so cool when you're able to get those disembodied voices and actually hear them in the moment. That way you can ask specific questions. That's always so cool. Like that was really cool for me. Like just personally, just like being able to hear the person's voice, which is really awesome. Is that what is your favorite type of evidence? Do you prefer like the photographic or video evidence or do you prefer the EVPs? That's a good question. So for me, anything works, you know, <laughs> but I do like the photos just because you can look back and be like, oh, this person looks like so and so. And then you can like connect with them. And if they're a family member, you know, be like, oh, they're still there for you, you know. But EVPs are really cool, too, just because you can hear their voices. Like it really depends, you know, depends. That's a good answer. Good answer. Um, your dad says that you've done a few event kids events that have gone really well at the old YMCA. I think that's that's really cool that they actually do um, kids events there. Are they are they kid hunts or are they more sort of education type events? OK, so they're kind of both. So we practically introduced the gear like, oh, this is a millimeter, this is a K2, these are dowsing rods, and we explained how to use them and what they do, and then we split up into groups. And then each like set of kids, mm -hmm. we use the gear, introduce the gear like, oh, so you can do this with this, you can ask yes or no questions as dowsing rods, and that's really all you can do. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask a question, what am I take a while to respond? Mm -hmm. in the way that you want it or and that's, yeah that's that's cool being able to kind of because sometimes if people haven't been on an investigation they don't understand just how uh sometimes it's it's not immediate you know that mm -hmm. you do have to spend a lot of time you know asking different questions and taking time with it um speaking of tools what type of tools do you like to use Okay, we're going to dig this baby out, right? <laughs> yes, if you've got anything to show, just go ahead and pull it up. Okay, so my favorite has to be my glow-in-the-dark dowsing rods I have. You can't really see them, they're oh. kind of dying. I need to put new batteries in. Wow. But, yeah. So how do you then, like those? Okay, so I think that they're really cool, they're really lightweight, and the battery does not upset them because it's balanced, mm -hmm. oh, which I really nice. like that. And then yeah. it's really easy to move them. Mm -hmm. like, just demonstration. Yeah, give us a demonstration like, there. Because a lot of people, the, the dowsing rods are always, they're, they're my favorite tool other than the EDI yeah. box. Yeah. You can really see them. Here, I'll do the other one. We got you. Oh, now that's cool. Ta-da. But they do, like, the only complaint that I have is, so this one makes a slight ringing noise, like a really high-pitched noise that kind of gives me a headache. That's okay. the only complaint that I have about these. But mm -hmm. after that, they're really cool. Is it the battery that, that makes that noise? Yeah, like, once you turn it off, it's gone. So I'm going to guess that's probably the battery. Okay. But after that, they're really nice, really, like, durable. Like, I've dropped them too many times to count. <laughs> so... <laughs> Like that just shows how much quality they have in their products. Yeah, and, and that's awesome because I know a problem I've had with mine is that I've bent mine before. Ooh. Yeah, and I've had to go in. Of course, mine are just the regular, just copper. Oh, yeah, uh, I have those I, too. Yeah, and it's easy if you're not careful to, to kind of bend those, and then, and then you've got to go in and rebalance them. 
but um, I, I really like that because one of the biggest complaints, and I've wanted to try the electronic ones because, you know, when you're sitting there in the dark and you're filming or when people are watching, it's really hard to see. And uh, the fact that they glow, that's, that's very cool. And then people have also made homemade ones, like where they just put like some hot glue on the end and then just painted it with glow in the dark paint. But the problem with that mm -hmm. is you have to keep on turning on and off the flashlight to keep them glowing. That's true. That's true. Um, I've always heard that and I've heard uh, glow in the dark nail polish. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't. Mm, it yeah. just chips. I don't like it. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. What other tools do you like to use? So I haven't really got to use him that much, but mm -hmm. he's here and he's Milo. <laughs> oh, that's cool. He's a little um, electromagnetic dog. Okay. Which, so Wrong button. That's great. And yes, I did have a dog tag made for him. Come at me. <laughs> <laughs> but he has different sensors all over his body and his legs, on his back, and on his nose, and his head. The sensors yeah. all over. And yeah. I think that's really nice for children's spirits just to be like, oh, it's not just a box this time. It's a, like stuffed animal, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, when, when you look at them, um, you know, when you're asking these spirits to, to touch a, a light or to touch a box, mm -hmm. you know, if, if these are older spirits, they may not understand what a light is. They may think of it as a candle or think of it as something. And, be afraid to uh to touch it so that's that's really cool has it worked really well you said you've not used it yet well i've but... used it once in my house if that counts is your house haunted a little bit <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just a tad <laughs> and and david says that um that your rods come from north canton paranormal detectives llc yep. that they have a lot of items yeah, which another good thing about the dowsing rods is they come in three different sizes and a lot of different colors. So okay. if you like just want the smaller ones, just carry around, you know, you can get the small ones if you want ones like mine, the medium ones. And then there's the bigger ones for like, oh, there's a bigger people. We got this. I see. I've know? seen I've seen someone using the big ones and I thought that those look quite large so I, yeah. your your medium ones are the size of what this is that the standard dowsing rod size um i would say they're a bit bigger than the standard size just compared to the last ones that i had which mm -hmm. mm, like the handle of them mm -hmm. would not allow the thing to like do it so i was just like yeah, that, and that makes sense, too, just because of, of the balance of them. So definitely, if anyone is interested in some of the uh, electronic rods, definitely check that out. What you got yeah. there? Plus, it comes, like, with a little case and everything. So. Oh, that's nice. So you that's can hook nice. it on with a little clip, and then it also has a ring at the end. Yeah, because in the, the picture that I used, if you got, you've got your rods there, uh, I guess it's attached there on your backpack, looks like. Yeah. And we have a comment from Sandy. She says different colors. I always thought they were copper. Um, the, the traditional dowsing rods are copper, um, mm -hmm. unless you've made your own and you're using um, a willow tree branch. Um, mm -hmm. But the ones that, that Madison is talking about, they're actually um, electronic glow in the dark rods. I can actually hear the, the yeah, bell. That, yeah, that's why I don't like it. <laughs> that's really the only complaint that I have after that. Everything's good. And I really like them. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, my friend and yours, Dan Norval, is on and says hello. Hello. I know Dan is someone that's been always supportive of, of Ghost Biker. And I always hear him say good things about you on there as well, on his lives that he does. Um, and uh, as Sandy says, uh never thought of putting electric to them that's really cool um so uh so are there any other tools that you like to use when you investigate or are you you know when you do your investigations um are you sort of a kind of sit and just ask questions or do you try different types of experiments uh what do you like to do when you do your investigations 
So usually I don't bring a lot of gear with me. Usually I just bring a dowsing rod, my dowsing rods for starters, and then my pendulum. Oh, very cool. Or pendulum. There's different ways to pronounce it, either way. <laughs> and then Milo I've taken to my house. So, you know, would like to test them out, but we have to wait. I know. Yeah. And when you go to go to these different locations, you know, you can easily trigger or, or pack, you know, what you want to trigger, uh, whatever is, is best at, at that different location. So that's, um, that's very cool. I'm, I'm the same way. Um, we can tend to get kind of bogged down with a lot of different equipment. Um, and, it can it can be kind of kind of tough, but I like seeing that sort of old school approach of of uh, using the rods because they're easy, especially and the pendulum as well. That's one that that I've not really had a whole lot of. I have a really cool pendulum, but um, I've not had a lot of experience with it. Uh, did you start with the rods or with the pendulum first? I started with the pendulum first, and then I moved on to the rods, or I okay. moved with the pendulum to the rods. I didn't just leave okay. the pendulum behind. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I, <would laughs> never. See, I, I did the opposite and started with the rods first and mm -hmm. then got the pendulum and then sort of um, I've used that on two different investigations, but I was never really sure as far as I don't know if I've got a steady enough hand for for the pendulum. I have it for the rods, but for the pendulum, I'm always worried I'm I'm moving with it. Yeah, that's a, like a big thing i usually have to like set it down on my leg or like a table just flat surface to keep myself still so we're all good <laughs> and your dad says that um, vortex ghost gear is um the one that made milo whoa dad no need to come at me there <laughs> whoa <laughs> and sandy says she has been asking investigators if they have ever had coins fall from out of nowhere when on investigation have you ever had like coins or anything fall from the ceiling i have not but i've heard coins that weren't ever found if that's counting for something yeah have you ever had anything throw anything at you other i mean um anything other than coins or anything Okay, so I've never had anything thrown at me, but I've had things thrown at my dad, on the other hand. <laughs> well, what's that story? Okay, same place, near by the furniture. <laughs> same place where um, the pool area is right beneath the um, torn out basketball, like uh, mm -hmm. the court. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just sitting down there in the dark. Next thing you know, a like little nut or bolt got thrown at my dad and somebody else oh wow and then everyone was freaking out so we were just like let's go upstairs and grab cookie guys um <laughs> peace <laughs> out so do you think they were trying to get his attention yeah like so we so i go over there over the summer when i didn't have things to do or like places to go mm -hmm. so um i was talking to the spirit who did it <laughs> And then he was like, no, no, I didn't mean, I didn't want to hurt them. I just want to get their attention. I was like, oh, okay. We're, we're friends now. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And uh, Sandy also said, uh, she said you can get a stand for a pendulum. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Um, when I, I used uh, kind of the base of my tripod, um, that way, you know, I could, see if it would move on its own. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have any luck with it with mine, but um, uh, I'll have to look into definitely one of those stands. And, uh, and David says that it was a fender washer and it zoomed between me and another investigator. That's Sorry really cool. That I don't know my freaking car parts and stuff. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. So I've had, um, I've had, I was investigating a church once and I had a staple thrown at me and, uh, and then it was kind of weird at the location that I was investigating last night. I had, um, I was sitting on the ground and we were in this very clean area and we were talking to children and it was just kind of weird. I, I sat back and I went to get up off the floor and I had a, 
like a, and we were talking about candy because I was asking the spirits if they wanted some candy. And when I set up, I had like what felt like a wad of gum sitting in the palm of my hand. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of flicking it off like that. And um, I mean, the floors were so clean and pristine and uh, cause it was in a uh, museum and uh, I don't know where it came from, but it was weird. We were talking about candy and there's nothing thrown at me, but um, it was all of a sudden when I went to get up and I pushed off the floor, I didn't feel it until I got up and it was like a glob of gum. <laughs> Love that guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Sandy says, I went to the science museum in Philly and they have a huge pendulum that moves by the earth's movement. That's, That's cool. really cool. And look who else we got on here. We have Mr. Dan that you hey, were just talking about earlier. Hey, Dan, thank you for joining us. Um, Madison and I were just talking about the Hinsdale house and, uh, and how she's going to be there soon. So, um, that's going to be, that's going to be really cool. Um, so, so let's talk a few minutes about Viner Furniture again. Um, does, do they still have some of the different areas that look like the old YMCA in there? Or does it, um, for the most part, look like a, I mean, have they converted it into a furniture store completely? Okay, so most of the parts are still original. Most of the staircases are still there. One of them are blocked, well, actually, no, two of them are blocked off. A spiral staircase is blocked by, like, a board for the new mm -hmm. flooring and then another like a uh, L or I don't know what it's called it's it goes up like mm -hmm. like you okay guys <laughs> I know I'm great <laughs> but um <laughs> both of those are blocked off and then the downstairs is mostly original and then the mm -hmm. entrance there's this little red part with like wood next to it that's original as well same with back like uh I don't know how to explain it. So if you enter the building and head to your right, there's mm -hmm. a door and you open that. Then you go through the other door, you open that, right? You walk mm -hmm. in, take another right. And then there's the original gym floor that's, that's still intact. Cool. And then there's like this part of the ceiling that like you can lift up, like all the ceiling can lift up. What am I talking about? <laughs> Which that's cool. Like, that's cool that they still have the the original uh, basketball court floor in there. Mm -hmm. Well, most of it. Like yeah. I said, most of it was torn out when they converted it over to a U haul because U hauls was that like took everything out. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And we also have um, Wolf Whisper. Excuse me, Wolf Whisper Paranormal in here as well. So, what are um, what are some of your, if you could pick five different, uh, different sort of bucket list locations, Ooh. where would you like to investigate? Okay. <laughs> Number one, the fridge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, actually I, um, mm, I would like to investigate Gettysburg battlefield. Very cool that I would like to um, get onto a warship or a battleship of any type. I, I'm not picky, guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, third place has to be um, Waverly Hills. Yeah. Because I haven't been there because they have an age restriction for public events. You have to be 18 or wow. older. Mm. I know, right? Really cut me out there, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Um, number four, mm. where else would I like to go? <laughs> that, that's a really good question. Um, to be honest, I would like to go to like, like a burial site, kind mm -hmm. of like an, like a tribal burial site mm -hmm. or like just somewhere in the woods, you know? So, so have you done uh, uh, any cemeteries or anything like that? Or oh, yes, I have. I've done oh, okay. some cemeteries. Okay. What, what's your favorite type of, of location? Do you prefer uh, somewhere outside like a cemetery or do you like doing houses, asylums? What's your favorite type of investigation? 
So normally it depends, but hospitals, like just plain old hospitals and any like psych ward place are like my go-tos. I don't know why, but hospitals and psych wards are just so cool for some reason, Mm -hmm. even though they really weren't back in the day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now I find them cool. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, you know, hospitals are great because you've got, you've got that life coming in and you've also got life going out. out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's anything and everything can happen there. Just so much emotion. So yeah, Mm -hmm. you'll have to, you'll have to make your way down here to Tennessee and we'll go over to uh, old South Pittsburgh uh, hospital. I think it's uh, now old South Pittsburgh paranormal research center. I got Um, you. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to uh, come down here and check it out and uh, we'll, we'll book a book a date and go over. I've investigated it on, let's see, four times now. And um, I've not investigated it since it's been, since it's under new ownership, but that place is off the chain with activity. And I'm talking just straight, great EVPs and uh you know even like phantom elevators i mean we've got people crying in the hall calling out codes and stuff that's a cool place okay what's your favorite experience from there like i want to hear everything from (laughs) there wow that's 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 a tough one too i know probably two of my favorite things from um from old south pittsburgh hospital was um the first one we were in there and we were, we actually um, heard this as a disembodied voice. We heard them calling out codes. We heard, uh, we were asking some different questions and it was almost kind of like an intercom in a way. And there was no power there at the time. And we captured, it was myself and another guy. And we captured um, a lady come across that was saying uh, code blue. And the way she was saying it, she was just like code blue, code blue. And repeated it twice like that and um it was it that i thought that was really cool and then the other time um we actually picked a room to to sleep in because you you could i don't know that you can sleep there now but at the time you could sleep there and so i think we were locked in from like seven in the evening until i feel like it was like 12 or 1 the next day and um We slept in there, put a recorder out in the hall and heard a lady crying, uh, walking the halls while we were sleeping. And and we caught her wailing. And this was just straight EVP saying, please let me see him. And she was she was pleading it. So uh, and uh, we've got a couple people mentioning over here. uh, Hell's Bar Dam, which Hell's Bar Dam is just just down the street from Old South Pit. So come to Tennessee and we'll hook you up with both of them. We'll do a dam and we'll do uh, old South pitch bark hospital. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see a few of the comments here. Um, Janet, I, I completely agree with you. She says, I don't think there should be age restrictions. It should be based on other factors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree as well, especially because you do have a, uh, um, I've met children. I've met children that are more mature than a lot of adults I know. So, <laughs> literally, <laughs> yeah. So I I completely agree with this. Um, let's see, Mr. Al Cooley. He was on the show last week. He says Gettysburg Battlefield was awesome. A lot of activity. Uh, I've never investigated at the actual um, battlefield, but I've been there several times, and I stayed at the um, Old Farnsworth Inn, which is there in Gettysburg. A lot of, lot of cool activity there as well. Uh, stayed on the way back from the Lizzie Borden house. So um, if you can definitely get to Gettysburg, uh, you should look into doing the Gettysburg Bash that's uh, later on in the year. I know a lot of investigators go there. Um, let's see. And Sandy says, I just went to a great cemetery in Cincinnati, Spring Grove. They have a huge Civil War area there. Heck yes. Yes. Mm. And then your dad says you can rent out the old YMC to investigate. Okay, great. I, that, was, that was actually a question I was going to ask uh, as we went on if uh, you can if you can rent out the location there. Mm-hmm. 
So that is good to know. People talking about Hell's Bar Dam. Um, let's see. I'm looking down here. Uh, let's see. Dip Fort Oglethorpe Battlefield in Georgia. Yeah, that's a good one as well. That's another one that's down here. Um, I like, uh, it's uh, the Chickamauga Battlefield. I like that one just as well. It's the second bloodiest uh, battle there in the Civil War. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's, it's a lot different than Gettysburg, but I feel like it's one that's kind of overlooked. So again, you'll have to get down in this area and and check that out as well. Check out the battlefield. But most important question, Madison, what is your favorite snack food when you go on an investigation? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part, right? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. So I've had some weird stuff at investigations. Mm -hmm. But Pringles. Oh, what type? Are you well, a mix like and match? Okay, so sour cream and onion is all right and all, but jalapeno, chef's kiss on that, okay? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I like that. Anything spicy for me. And then rowdy energy drinks can never go wrong. Oh, okay. Even the cherry limeade ones, those are so good. Oh, okay. Now, I can't say I've ever ever had any of those. Um, I'm definitely a salty over sweet kind of person when it comes to my snacks. Um, on my last last two investigations, uh, I'm kind of a beef jerky girl and uh, I love combos, but they're hard, kind of hard to find. Yeah. Usually, you usually have to get them at the gas stations. <laughs> yeah, I can feel you there. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So, as far as um, any other, um, any cool evidence that, that you've gotten that you would uh, kind of like to share? I know you mentioned there at, um, when you were there at the, at Viner Furniture about capturing the EVP. What's, what's uh, one of your best pieces of evidence that you've ever captured? Ooh, one of the best. Or one of your favorite. Yeah. Okay, so my so far favorite had to be the one where we heard someone talk back. But we're going to go with the second favorite for now since I've already told that story. Okay? Okay, so this is the same place, Old YMCA. I mm -hmm. believe it was a third floor. I just mm -hmm. believe it was. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it had to be the third floor because since the first. Yeah, the fourth floor is all original. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So it has to be the third floor. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but either way, so we were sitting up there, and I was doing a singing bowl, which oh. I'm pretty sure all of you know what that is. If you don't, it's a really cool thing. It's put away right now. But um, it's just like a little bowl, actually. Yeah, I've got my I've got away. a green one over ah. there. Ah, yes, get that out, because um, that's actually when I, I saw you were the first that I saw with a singing bowl, and I was at an event, and... Um, I got a singing bowl. Yes, so let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, so I used to know the origins till I forgot. <laughs> but um, practically what it is, is it's supposed to hype up the spirits. Like, it's supposed to just wake them up like, yo, you know? Mm -hmm. if, if I had, like, two pots and pans, you know? <laughs> just like, hey, I'll wake up. So do, uh, you, do you know how to play it? Yes, yes, I do. Can you play just a little bit for us? Turn down your volume, y'all. <laughs> okay. You ready for this, kids? Sorry, Mom and Dad, also. Okay. There was like a little piece of dust in there. Sorry. I was like, okay. So what you want to do is, this is wooden. And mm -hmm. then usually there's something to hold it, just so it can vibrate. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. It does send out vibration, is what is supposed to um, wake up the spirits, as believed by most. But, mm -hmm. you know. So it's supposed to be vibrations and noise. And then you're supposed to keep this and swirled around for as long as you can to keep the mm -hmm. vibration going. And if you do it correctly, it will make a ringing sound. And that's why they call it a singing bowl because it mm -hmm. practically, quote unquote, sings. So. Ooh. 
Very nice. And and it's yeah. it's kind of tricky. It's because I know mine. I don't know that you can see behind me, but on my piano back there, um, I've got nice. a, a really big green one. Yeah, and it, it seems like well, it seems like the bigger they are, the harder they are to play. And yeah. um, or at least for me, it it actually took me a lot of practice to be able to to get the to get it to get it to sing essentially. Yeah. But I've never used mine on an investigation. Have have you used yours on one? Yes. So I used to take it everywhere until mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> but um it has worked in a lot of locations. Like I said, Dan Viner, it woke up the spirits a lot there. So mm -hmm. before investigations, I used to keyword used to before I was like just forgot it and then yeah. yeah. But, um, I used to go around and do it just to wake them up and the night would be awesome. Things would happen. Mm -hmm. So I did it till I forgot. And yeah, <laughs> I've been tempted to try it. I know, uh, I, I know when, when, uh, like I said, I got mine at an event at the Bel Air house mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, I had gotten mine for meditation and that's what, uh, um, Sandy says it's great. Bless you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> bless you. That, that's she, a says, uh, <laughs> she says, you know, it is great for meditation. Yeah. And uh, that's, it's, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it it is, uh, um, well, no, I don't want to say, I was going to say Tibetan, uh, I think, Maybe. or, or um, yeah, Buddhist. I, I can't, I, 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 I don't. I don't yeah, know I the. Don't want to say that it is, but yeah, you know. Um, but I know, I know they they are great in meditation and uh, for for focus and centering, and it is a a vibration thing. Um, I know for for myself, Sandy says Buddhist. Um, you know, it's uh, one of those where uh, I do binaural beats and stuff when I'm drawing and working on stuff. And so to get that vibration frequency level, and I know they use a lot of, uh, singing bowls in, uh, in those as well. So, yep. um, do you have any other traditions or, or, uh, things that you do on the investigations? Um, I know some people do, well, you know, you talked about your singing bowl. Um, yep. some people do a prayer of protection. Is there anything that you do to protect yourself when you do these investigations? So, <laughs> so I'm going to be truthful. Mm -hmm. I used to do like a little prayer. I'm like, don't let anything bad happen. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. but, um, I kind of didn't do that. Like I did. And then I didn't, it was mm -hmm. like the first month, eh first month of investigating that I did it and then I was like yeah about that guys um I don't think this is working out <laughs> so then I just bring around crystals instead for good mm -hmm. energy you know mm -hmm. so yeah crystals gotcha yeah you uh um I have I have one of the pendulum the crystal pendulums that you made Mm -hmm. uh, me there in the beginning as, uh, as well as a uh, stone that you sent me. And, yeah. uh, I always keep that stone with me cause that's, it's one, it's one of my favorite or it is my favorite color. So, uh, I always keep that with me on my investigations as well. Mm -hmm. Like what so. was your favorite color again? Was it yellow or green? Green. What I thought I was like, it's yellow yep. or green. I know it. <laughs> yep. yep. I know it's, it is. <laughs> it's green. Um, so we are getting close to the end here and, uh, why don't you go on and promote what you do? Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about your podcast, Spoopy Talk and right. tell us, tell us where the name came from, first of all, cause it is okay. very unique <laughs> and, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about, about the podcast. My dad just called me out in the comments. All right. <laughs> but, uh, either way, moving on. <laughs> So, um, the word spoopy, it was an accident, just to be honest. <laughs> like, I Most try to say, things are. So I try to say spooky, but instead of saying spooky, I said spoopy, 
And then Sarah Stream, another person I know that I know and love, practically a sister to me, she was like, Spoopy? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so then after that, someone named um, Sharla, she was like, you should start a podcast with us. And I was like, okay. And then I was trying to come up with a name. And then I asked Sarah, I was like, what do you think it should be? She's like, Spoopy Talk. I'm like, oh, okay. So we just went with it. Nice. Which, and so you've been doing it for how many years now? That's a good question. Um, I want to say two years. I know that we're past one. I know that because we've had an anniversary. Yep. Because I was in your second year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then is that three years, maybe? I think yeah. it's been three years now. Because, yeah, that was in uh, 2019 when I was on. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll we'll just forget about 2020. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> forget about that. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I think, I think um, gosh, yeah, it was back in 2019 when I was on. And, okay. um, yeah, and you've had some great guests on, too. Um, mm. A lot of... A lot of uh, big names in the paranormal field and a lot of uh, different people who are doing some really cool things. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the guests that you've had on? Because people people should definitely go back and listen to some of your past episodes. But who are some of the different people that you've had on there? Okay. I'm not going with names like I said before. So we're going to be naming the people that are like top of my head. <laughs> William Conkle. <laughs> Dan Class, of course. Uh, Elizabeth Saint, I'm pretty sure was on there. Like, I believe she is. She was. She I, was. I was like, I believe she is or was. I really need to go back to school. <laughs> uh, either way. <laughs> uh, then I had Rex Nelson, Josh Hurd, Kylie Chris. Now me looking at my wall. Um, <laughs> like, I had a lot of people on there. Nice. Yeah, and definitely. So if people want to go back, and and watch those where can they where can they find those at um is it on is, it's on spreaker yep s p r e a k like speaker <laughs> but spreaker <laughs> yes S speaker but with an r guys yes speaker, but with an r yes and that will start back up it's it's not going right now correct yeah it'll start back up a little bit later. everything going on so we were like post Owned, everyone exactly and that typically when it goes is it a sunday night thing that they can watch or listen live uh, yes it is okay. a sunday night i believe or it, it's it's in the weekend okay <laughs> but i'm pretty sure it is sunday gotcha that's that's awesome and so definitely if people want to check out madison's show spoopy talk they can go and they can like and follow and subscribe your page. Um, it's Madison Paranormal Investigation, correct? And find more information out about Spoopy Talk on there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, ah, yes. David. Ah, uh, yes. Spoopy my father Spoopy coming Talk. in handy once again. Paranormal Buzz Radio on Speaker yep. or Spreaker, excuse me. Spreaker. I just, yes. And actually, I had seen where uh, Paranormal Buzz Radio, we've got uh, a couple of those folks that were on here uh, earlier, and I saw where they had uh, shared your ad to be on here. So we, we really like Paranormal Buzz Radio. Yeah, and they're super nice. Like, they, this they really super are. They're a chill platform. They really are. They're, they're good, and they've got a lot of great shows on their platform. If, uh, People are looking for some great paranormal podcasts to check out. Paranormal Buzz Radio is uh, definitely good. And your dad says, that's what I'm good for. I'm here for memory. <laughs> and I'm here for grammar. <laughs> <laughs> and and Matt, and I was, I was just speaking about you, Matt. Um, he has the link on here to... Uh, to the, to the show. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank and, you. Buddy. Thank you. <laughs> and Matt, Matt's always been a good friend to this show as well. So mm -hmm. we always appreciate him and his support. And we have, uh, let's see, just looking sure to make sure that I've not missed anything. I saw where your dad had mentioned uh, when we were talking about the prayer of protection yeah. 
that uh, you wear your dog Ruby's ashes in a necklace for protection. And, That's in the other room. Uh, I take her everywhere. I kind of forgot about her. To be honest, I, I don't bring her up. I just don't bring her up. I understand. And Sandy says, to be so young, you're off to a great start and your understanding is really cool and respectful. I wish I would have started early, but I was scared of the things I saw and went to church and prayed for it to go away. And it did. Um, that That is the thing that, that um, I love about your post and love about everything you do. Um, you're very respectful, Madison. And that is such a great thing to bring into this community and you're so positive too um that's that's always such a great thing to see and so again you know kudos to your dad david for his support and to you for everything that um you do to bring a positive light into the paranormal community yeah. and uh you know just just keep up the great work thank you you do too i mean Aww. I'm great. I can spell. I can correct it in a text. I can create a perfect paragraph in language arts, but I cannot speak. This is it's, great. It's tough. It, you know, it's tough doing these shows and, and you're, you know, being, you're used to interviewing people. So yeah. I know it's always different because I have a lot of podcast hosts that come on my show and it's always different because they're in a different seat and they're kind of like, you know, uh, the guy that was on last week, we were just talking yep. about this. You know, it's, it's easy to ask the questions, but when you're put on the spot, you know, it's kind of sometimes hard to remember things. So, yeah. you know, you're doing good and you're starting out, you're starting out young. So um, mm -hmm. I think that's, I, I think that that is awesome. Um, let's see. I was just looking to see if there were any more questions. Um, uh, thank you, Junior. Um, Junior mentioned, can't wait to see you at the Music on Main event. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be there and I'll mention that in a few other events here in just a few minutes whenever we wrap things up. And then he also said that you are doing a great job, Madison. Don't be nervous. Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, but again, thank you so much. And like we said, you need to definitely check out Madison under Madison Paranormal Investigations. And you don't have a YouTube channel up yet, do you? No. <laughs> so you're you're on uh, Facebook. Um, is it Instagram? Are you on there as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anywhere else that uh, people can find you that if they want to uh, follow your events and follow... Um, your podcast and such anywhere else no but mainly we post on facebook okay instagram's kind of just there if you know what i yeah. mean just... yeah it's and good for yes. good for pictures yeah yes. great for pictures, guys yeah and definitely definitely check out madison's podcast spoopy talk on um uh, paranormal buzz radio on spreaker and as matt says great show awesome guest so you know thank again thank you for coming on tonight thank you david for for your help and also getting madison here and then also thank everyone in the chat room for your questions and your comments I really appreciate you guys. And I'm going to take just a minute and talk about a few events that I've got coming up um, next week. Let me make sure that I get this right. Next week, I'm going to have Jess Rogie with the Rogie Report. Uh, I was recently on her show and um, we had a great time. And after we got offline, um, we, the conversation continued for another hour and we covered some, some great things and I invited her to be on my show. And we're actually going to talk about a topic that is uh, kind of a hot topic, um, buzz thing right now with, uh, all the UFO stuff that's coming out. Um, I'm not a UFOlogist or a few, a UFO researcher, so I don't know anything about that but i'm very interested that's her specialty and so we're going to be talking to her and having her on telling uh some really cool things she she does the rogie report so she will be on next thursday night at um uh at 9 p.m eastern time <clears throat> and then also on like i said we're working on season four right now got some great things coming out we're supposed to um have a few um 
videos coming out from a few of the events that we've had over the last little bit. Those will be coming out soon. Um, but we're looking at the weekend of July 4th. Uh, which is going to be a Sunday. I'm going to be out at uh, in Huntsville, Tennessee at their 4th of July celebration on the 10th. I'm going to be at the Music on Main on a meet and greet for their Veterans Day celebration as well as their History in the Street celebration. Um, you know, they're on the historic Main Street. History is super important and so are our veterans. And so there's going to be a lot of things bringing this history to light and to life there on Music on Main. And that's going to be from 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Oneida, Tennessee. And then the very next week, we're going to have a little more information as this becomes available. I'm going to be in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the uh, Bigfoot conference that's being uh, hosted by the Lost Cryptids Conservatory and going to have a motorcycle up there and going to be talking about the paranormal side. A lot of great Bigfoot researchers that are going to be there, but I'm going to be covering the paranormal. And then at the end of the month on July 31st, going to be a part of the second annual meet and greet at the uh, Simpson County Historical Society Old uh, Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky. And this is being hosted by Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Paranormal. And there's going to be a lot of great paranormal investigators there. And that's going to be their second annual paranormal meet and greet. And we'll have more information about that with times and everything that's going to be on July 31st. We got people traveling from all over the country to uh, to this particular event. So we'll have more information on that coming soon. So with all that being said, again, I want to thank everybody and um, wish you a great week. And we'll be in touch soon with more events and stuff that's coming up. So see you next week. Bye, everyone. Stay spoopy.